coach who served as an assistant at five different universities, including New York Tech, before leading the basketball programs at Manhattan, St. John's, and New Mexico. He has since enjoyed a tremendous career in broadcasting, and our special thanks to ESPN's Fran Franchella for being with us today to share his insights and his expertise. Thank you so much, Fran. Al, oh, thanks very much, Jeff. I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to be back home. You know, this is uh, it's great to see so many uh, familiar faces, some people I haven't seen in quite a while. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's fabulous for me personally to be back as someone that grew up in Brooklyn, that uh, even before I got into college coaching would travel around the, the five boroughs and, uh, and uh, Long Island and see teams like Wagner and St. Francis and Manhattan College long before I ever dreamed that I could be a college coach. So to be here today uh, is a thrill. Uh, I'm a mid-major guy at heart. You know, I got my start uh, at Manhattan College as the head coach. Uh, I, I saw a familiar face. Chris Williams, where are you, Chris? My first point guard, uh, really the heart and soul of our of the first team at Manhattan College to go to the NCAA tournament in almost 40 years. Great seeing you, my man. Uh, I got to tell you this story. When I signed my contract at Manhattan College, tell you right now it was uh, it was a four-year deal for $75,000 a year and uh, they understood that it was hard to buy a house in New York City and the environs so my wife found a house in Westchester and Manhattan College in the contract the one thing they gave me was a $50,000 loan to make a down payment on a house that was kind of a little out of our price range uh, at that time, and it was a small house too in, West, in White Plains. And the deal in my contract was if the team ever got to the NCAA tournament, that the $50,000 loan would be erased. I didn't think anything of it. I was just happy to be a head coach for the first time after an assistant coaching career that took me to URI, Ohio U, Ohio State, and then Providence College. So we have uh, a very successful season. Steve Lapis had left me an incredible group of guys at Manhattan that I was lucky enough to inherit. Um, quite frankly, the first five games of my coaching career, they, they, my upperclassmen coached the team until I figured out what was going on. But we get to the MAC final, and we're playing Niagara, coached by Jack Armstrong, a guy who grew up down the street from me in Brooklyn, ironically. And it's a great game on ESPN. Bill Raftery's on the call. We're down 10 at the half. We rally. Uh, we tie it. And Chris Williams gets fouled with 1.2 seconds to go on the clock. And uh, we have a chance to go to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1958. And Chris steps up to the line, was about an 80% shooter missed the first one and it was the first time all year I said to myself holy crap this is a $50,000 free throw <laughs> and uh, luckily for the Frischella family and all the Manhattan College Jasper family Chris made the second one and uh, we went to the NCAA tournament and uh, uh, brother Thomas and Bob Burns were very happy I think uh, to erase that loan so uh, it's a great memory to see Chris here, and, and, and I did have some great guys in Manhattan. The first game I ever coached at Manhattan College, uh, when you're an assistant coach, as all the head coaches know, you kind of feel like you have all the answers. And I certainly did at that time when I was an assistant coach to Rick Barnes at Providence. And uh, I was really excited to get that job. And I'll, I'll never forget the first game of coaching at Manhattan is against Hofstra University. And they're, they're coached by a legendary coach, Butch Van Bredekoff. For those of you who don't know, Butch took Princeton to the Final Four in 1965. He coached the Los Angeles Lakers, one of the great teams in NBA history with Chamberlain, West, and Elgin Baylor. He coached numerous NBA stops, and he probably had 1,500 wins. So first game, my team's out there warming up, and I'm sitting in the Manhattan College uh, locker room by myself 
and I'm thinking to myself, me and Butch Van Bredekoff, if coaching has anything to do with this game, I'm, I'm screwed. <laughs> and we just, go, we just so happened that night to have better players. And uh, we won the game, and Butch was a gentleman, but it kind of made me think that, uh, what do we say, it's not, the X, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. And uh, we just happened to have a better team that night. We won the game, but I'll never forget being in that locker room thinking, well, what am I going to do? This guy is going to run rings around me. But uh, got my first win against Hofstra, and um, I had great battles with uh, uh, Coach Van Bredenkopf and then my really good friend Jay Wright, who did a great job here. And, Again, it's great to be back. I, I have great empathy uh, and, and excitement, really, for all eight coaches here because I've been there. Uh, I said earlier I'm a mid-major guy at heart. I get to call the Big 12. I've done the Maui Invitational. I've gotten to do some incredible stuff at ESPN. And I know everybody, ta I know everybody gets sick. Th those of us who love college basketball, we get a little sick about talking about Duke and Kentucky and North Carolina at nauseam on ESPN. But one thing that's never changed about me is, is my roots. And uh, so when I see the eight coaches here, I have a flashback to mid-October every season, getting your team ready, finishing recruiting, getting ready to play the season in three weeks. And uh, I know, because I know virtually all eight guys, some better than others, that uh, we have a great group of coaches, really a phenomenal group. I learned a long time ago that just because you're in the Big Ten or the Big East doesn't make you necessarily a great coach. My good friend Bob McKillop at Davidson was a great coach at Long Island Lutheran, uh, and he was a great coach before Steph Curry. I always tell him he's a 20, he was a 20-year overnight sensation because he was winning games at Davidson without Steph Curry, and it only took Steph Curry to have the, the nation realize how good a coach he was. And, when I see what uh, Coach Coolis has done, Stevie Mass, what Jimmy Ingles did at, uh, at, at NJIT, what Bashir's doing, um, and you know, and I'll talk about all the guys later. Um, those guys have proven that they can they can coach anywhere, and their guys work every bit as hard as the guys that I saw the last couple of days in Kansas and Kentucky on my travels. So um, it, it, I'm I'm thrilled to be here. One last thing I'll tell you about being at ESPN. I'm starting my 14th year. Uh, this is my real hair, which is amazing because uh, I'd either be bald or gray by now had I stayed in coaching. And when people ask me about the transition, the best way to describe it is when I'm doing a Kansas Baylor game and two of my really good friends are coaching, Bill Self and Scott Drew, and that game is going back and forth down to the wire, and Brent Musburger are calling that game on Big Monday. And I see how those guys are uh, coaching their teams coming down the home stretch. I see the stress on their face. All I think about is, man, I hope Outback's open till 10. Uh, that's my main concern, is to get a good meal and talk ball after the game. So, um, all right, let's get started. Uh, first coach that's uh, coming up here uh, did a phenomenal job at NJIT. Um, he was a former assistant at Columbia. Columbia has had a renaissance in basketball the last few years, um, and this guy, uh, we were talking earlier, the Ivy League right now is probably as strong as it's ever been. The Columbia basketball brand is hot right now. Um, he's replacing some really key guys, but based on his track record and what he's done as an assistant and a, as a head coach, uh, the Lions are in great hands. Uh, let's welcome up to the stage Jim Ingles. Thanks, friend. Um, just want to, I guess, starting off, I just think this is an unbelievable opportunity. It's a great idea. I don't know who came up with the idea to do this, and I think it's a great situation because I think back when I first became an assistant at Wagner College, I've been in coaching now for 26 years. Um, as an assistant, I know Fran was the head coach for a long time. He thought he knew everything. I thought I knew everything as an assistant coach. So Tim Capshaw hired me at a college, and we had a practice, and I was telling him that we should be doing this, this, and this. So he got back at me because back in the day, they used to have, I don't know if they had this every week or every month or every couple of weeks, they used to have it in Madison Square Garden. So all the coaches would get together and back in the day it was legendary coaches like 
you know, PJ would come and you hear all the stories about what they would joke with each other and bust on each other. And then you know, Coach Karnaseka and Tim Capstraw, you know, the large media maven that he's become was, was a legendary person as he went through these different things. So Tim realized that I was a 22-year-old assistant, and in order to get me, he didn't realize how to get me to shut up. And one thing he realized was that I didn't like to speak in front of people. So he figured out, he said, I'm not going to media day this week. And he said I had to go to media day. And I was so scared. I never said anything the rest of the, the, rest of the year in practice because he got me so good. So I think back of all the different things and what they've done and to, to rekindle this and to get this back going, I think it's a wonderful opportunity because um, you get a chance to spend some time with, with your coaching, you know, your coaching brethren. And, um, I, I don't, I, hopefully this doesn't come down to where we have to, to play each other because I have no interest in playing any of you guys. But I do like seeing you guys and it gets a chance to see everybody and, and rather than just see people at the game. So, I think it's a great opportunity for us and a great opportunity for New York City basketball. I'm very blessed to uh, be able to represent Columbia and the Ivy League here today. Um, you know, I was the head coach, uh, I'm a New York guy, I grew up in Staten Island, and uh, I was head coach at NGIT for the past eight years. It was a hard thing to do to leave because we were able to build something pretty good there. But Columbia to me is uh, it's a special place for me personally. It did so much for me both as an assistant and, and personally for some of the things that I've done. So it was just a great opportunity for me to come back. I'm inheriting a program that won 25 games last year on CIT championship. So there's a lot of things that, obviously, with what Kyle Smith was able to accomplish, there's a lot of pressure to continue what he was able to build. So I think he did an unbelievable job. And um, you know, we lost four very key seniors last year that have all gone on to have good, three have gone on to have professional, or two, two professional careers. One's playing at Cal now, and the other one has gone on to the professional world. Um, so we have a lot of new players that are stepping up into new roles um, that played some roles in their in the team last year but are stepping into real prominent roles and we're trying to learn some of that stuff as we've gone through the first week of practice. So I think we have some good talent, I think we have some good guys coming back and I'm excited about where we can go with the program and the opportunity that, that uh, that's been given to us. So I, I'm guessing we're supposed to open this up to questions now. That's it? Okay. All right. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Jeff, I would think if we have some, we, will we have time for a couple questions? No, at the end, yes. At the end, okay. And, every, and everybody's going to have access to the coaches, and, uh, and that's great. Um, next coach, uh, when he, he called me to ask if I had time, what's today, the 12th? He said, are you doing anything on October 12th? And uh, I said, I'm not. And he said, would you mind? coming to New York and, and emceeing Media Day, New York City College Basketball Media Day, and uh, I've known this guy a long time, and uh, you're not going to tell Joe Mahalik no, um, because he's that kind of guy. And uh, I've known, as I said, I've known Joe forever, was a great assistant at LaSalle for uh, 17 years, I think, 15 years, the head coach at Niagara University. I always felt, Joe, Chris, you'd, you would back this up, when we made that Niagara Canisius trip, the best part of that trip was being at the airport on the way back home to New York, okay, in mid-January. He's come to Hofstra now, and uh, he's done a fabulous job here. He's got another very good team, Joe Mahalik. Thanks, Fran. And, and I, you know, I think everybody's going to stand up here and thank everybody for being here, and, and they should. This is, uh, this is great. This is great. My wife's going through this decluttering thing right now at the house. I said, how do you know what to throw out? I think you should throw everything out. And she said, well, you keep the things that spark joy. That's what you should do, keep the things that spark joy. So, so does this event spark joy? The event does, for sure. Now, now, and, and the coaches, I don't know if it sparks joy to see them, because you think about playing them, and if you think about playing each other, then, you know, like Jimmy was saying, you start to get odd, you know. But I'll tell you what it does spark but when I see the other coaches. Admiration and respect, because each and every one of these guys sitting here and uh, you know, when they walk into a, into a gym, you know, the feeling is that you respect what they do and how they do it. You admire what they do and how they do it. And, and uh, you know, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel proud of the profession you're in because not everybody's like that. So I want to thank you guys for not just being here, for, but for doing for the profession what you do for the profession. So um, I'd also like to thank uh, Stephen Gorchoff and, and, and Jeff Hathaway. Stephen, I think this was Stephen Gorchoff, our assistant athletic director. And, uh, you know, he, uh, I think he went to Jeff with his brainchild and, 
it is exciting to do this. I think this is, is a fabulous thing. And he and Jeff got together, and with Steven's idea and Jeff's idea as they put this together, I think it's a, it's a great thing for college basketball in New York City. You know, Franny, and, and, and as mentioned, Chris, and, you know, Chris, Philadelphia Big Five, right? I mean, it's, it's a special thing. It really is. And so is this. And so is this. And I don't think we built on it enough. So it's great that we're doing this. You know, it's really good that we're doing this. I mean, you know, sometimes we have to play each other, and I get it. You know, I don't think Penn wants to play Villanova every year, but, but they do it. And so it's good. When we play each other, we play each other. We try to beat each other's brains out. But it's, uh, at the end of the day, it's great for New York City and great for college basketball in New York City. Um, exciting time of the year for all of us. I know we got our Midnight Madness coming up next Thursday. And if you can make it next Thursday night, 8 o'clock, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get you a cup of coffee to, to keep you awake. But next Thursday night, 8 o'clock here, the 27th, or whatever, maybe two Thursdays, right? The 27th, that's what it is, right? Okay. So it'll be great. Uh, I want to wish everybody luck. Uh, you know, I'm lucky enough to, to, be, to be coaching people like Rokas Castis and Brian Bernardi that are here. And, uh, you know, it's funny. You know, I was walking Franny for Schiller around a little bit today. Got here, we got here early. We walked around, and, and as we're walking to the office, Rock was coming out of the door. Rokas was coming out of the door, and I said, "You know what? He's he's always worked hard. He's the second leading rebound in the country last year, but he's he's taken it to another level now. I mean, you just can't get him out of the gym." Uh, and ironically, I think he learned that from Brian Bernardi because that, we then walked into the practice facility, and sure enough, Brian Bernardi was in there getting shots up. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm lucky enough to be coaching guys like that. And, uh, you know, uh, so as I said to you guys yesterday, so Franny just got finished watching Pitt, West Virginia, Kansas, and Kentucky practice. Now he's going to watch us practice today. So put a little pressure on him, Fran, to, to, to have a good practice. I uh, want to wish everybody luck. Again, I think this is a great thing. I hope we can keep building on it. And uh, it's great to see everybody here. Thanks. Mr. Ingles, how are you? Ed Ingles, uh, I got to know Ed when I was coaching at Manhattan College, and he was the voice of uh, Iona. And I never told you this, but anytime we had a good win at Manhattan, and I'd be driving home, it might be in the morning on CBS radio, I always wanted to hear Ed Ingles, and you'd be driving to work, and you'd hear the score, St. John 71, Villanova 68, Manhattan 63, Sienna 60, and I'd hear that Ed Ingalls giving the scores, and I'd wait. I would, it would just be a good feeling. Yeah, we won last night. That's cool. And uh, great to see you. Yep. And speaking of uh, Iona, uh, the next gentleman has done an amazing job. Six straight 20-win seasons, NCAA last year. That league is a tremendous basketball league. When you look at Manhattan and uh, Monmouth, Iona, Sienna, go down the list, you know, Niagara Canisius. Um, but he's done a great job. It was a big rival of ours when I was in Manhattan. I know it's still a big rivalry. And uh, it's proof that you can have great programs in one league in, in one area of the country, like the MAC does. Uh, Mr. Tim Kloos. Thank you, Coach. For me, this is really special, so I want to say thank you all for being here, for all of the coaches that are here. And it's great. I grew up about four minutes down the road from here. Uh, everything I know about basketball, which is very little, I learned on the schoolyards and the courts of Long Island. So it's, it's really exciting to be here with all these coaches. When I was young, I got to watch all your schools play. I was the youngest of five, so I'd watch you play whenever I could get a chance. I'd take a bus, take the subway, get on the train, get into the old garden and stuff like that, and just watch anyone compete. And to be here now with the opportunity to coach and see the fellow coaches that run all these programs, what a great job everyone here does. It's really exciting. Uh, it's October, it's time for basketball season, nothing better. Uh, I'm excited because we've got to work out for a week. Our guys are working really hard. Deshaun Much is a junior for us, who's here today. I think he leads us with his work ethic on the team like players before him. He is the one showing all the newcomers what it's like to be a Gale. We have seven newcomers this year, so we have our work cut out for us, but we're excited about the opportunity. We work hard every day. And we look forward to competing against anyone that we get the chance to play against. I want to wish everyone here luck. I know it's going to be really quick, but that's just me. I'm up here and excited to, to get the basketball season started. Let's throw that ball up and everyone go out and win a lot of games. Thanks for being here. Our next coach has been part of a 
very, very successful LIU program for a, a number of years as assistant coach and head coach. Uh, kind of interesting, I live in Dallas, Texas now, and they were really smart uh, back seven, eight, nine years ago. Dallas has a lot of players. Texas has a lot of players. They did a terrific job of mining that area, and they have uh, they've been at, uh, towards the top of their league virtually every year since he's been there, Mr. Coach, excuse me, Coach Jack Perry. Thanks, Frank. First off, is this what you meant? <laughs> what you would look like if you were still coaching? All right, um, obviously, uh, uh, thanks for inviting me uh, to this. This is, this is awesome. Uh, like Joe said, yeah, everybody's going to do the same thing and, and really uh, show appreciation to, uh, uh, to be here. Uh, great coaches, um, metropolitan area, um, big time basketball, and it's, it's, it's just an exciting, exciting time for, for all of us to, 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 to get ourselves going here. Uh, I'm really excited uh, about our program and where we're at right now. Uh, last year, uh, we had no seniors. Um, so we were a little inconsistent. Uh, this year we have we have four seniors and a, and a redshirt junior. So really excited about the, the, the prospects for us this year um, to get us back to where we want to be. Uh, guys like Joel Hernandez, who's, who's been with me, and this, is, this is his fourth year co-captain. Uh, kid reminds me of uh, a kid, uh, Thomas Walkup. Um, you know, really excited. That's what I've been talking about him. Uh, about hey, he has so much versatility to do so many different things, and, and really excited about what Joel brings to the table. Uh, Jerome Frank was a uh, first team all league player for us last year, uh, coming from Florida to National St. Anthony's. Uh, so, so those two guys, uh, along with uh, some other seniors, I was in Florida, Glenn Fidenga. I think this is a year that we got to make a jump, and we should make a jump. Uh, we, have a, we have a good mix of freshmen, sophomores, and seniors. So. Uh, it should be fun. Uh, it should be exciting. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, for, for the, our prospects this year. So, uh, thanks again for having me, Jeff. Everybody here at Hofstra, this place is amazing. I, I now realize why we don't necessarily recruit against Hofstra. Um, so, uh, again, great job, great job for everybody. All right, good luck. Thank you, Jack. Uh, next coach. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm awfully proud of my Manhattan College heritage. Uh, it's a, a coaching lineage that uh, has been some great coaches through the years. The modern version of the success of Manhattan College started with Steve Lapis. Uh, I was lucky enough to replace Steve. There have been other terrific coaches at Manhattan College. It's a great, uh, it's a great breeding ground. Uh, uh, we had a great AD when I was there in, in, uh, in Bob Burns. And uh, Stevie Massiello has continued that great tradition. They've had some really, really good teams, I think three titles in four years and as I said the league's very competitive I know he likes his team and uh, uh, let's bring him up here now Stevie Mass thank you coach uh, good to see everyone it was, it was two titles I don't want Tim to get upset at me um, he nudged me as soon as you said that uh, this is just a great great uh, special thing to be a part of uh, it's great to see all the coaches Obviously, Coach Mahalik is doing a terrific job here. Tim and I were talking a little bit about the facilities, and of course, Joe had to come over and say, hey, let's go look at our practice facility. Um, knowing Tim and I have nothing like that, so it's, uh, it's great. This is really a special place. It's a great idea. It's a great event um, to share it with the Metropolitan coaches. New York is the mecca of, of basketball, and anytime you can get um, coaches together um, who respect each other and really know each other well it makes it a lot of fun and, and very special um, I'm very excited about this year at Manhattan um, I think there's a lot of great things going on not only in the athletic department with the team but also at the college it's a it's a different team for me uh, we have eight players who I've never played in a game for me uh, which is going to be interesting we turned three double digit scorers uh, Rich Williams led by Rich Williams who's a senior who's with us today, and Xavier Turner, who's a transfer from Ball State, where he was Rookie of the Year. So I think we have a great balance of, of some youth, some inexperience, some experience. Uh, the one thing I, I like about our guys, though, is they're, they're very humble and they're working very hard. And, and as a coach, that's all you can ask for. So uh, I'm very excited about this coming year. I think there's going to be a lot of room for us to improve and get better and hopefully build off some momentum 
that we've built over the years. Uh, but more, more than anything, it's, it's just about enjoying special days like this with the media, uh, with administrators, and, and the fellow coaches. So thank you for having us, and uh, have a good day. Steve, you, you do tell recruits that we have a great practice facility, but on game day we turn it into Dratty Gym, right? <laughs> uh, the next coach has done, uh, I've known this guy a long time also, I've known many of these guys a long time, but uh, he's done a uh, fabulous job at St. Francis of Brooklyn. Um, he's a grinder, um, gets guys to play hard. Uh, they've had probably some of the most success they've had in, in the history of the school under his watch, and uh, we'll bring him up here now, Mr. Glenn Breaker. Thank you, friend. And uh, I don't mean to be repetitive, but I just want to thank Hofstra for having us here today. I think this is a great event. Um, we have a great fraternity of coaches here in New York City, and I think the more of this we can do, the better. Um, so many great coaches, different styles, different personalities, and, and we all get along uh, very well, despite what some people may think. Um, uh, with regards to my team, um, I heard Joe Mahalik say that he's having Midnight Madness coming up soon. Uh, right now we're having madness every day in practice. We, we got seven new guys, they think I'm crazy, and we don't know what we're doing. But um, I really like our group. I, I think we're going to get better, and I really I think they're talented, I think they have the right mindset, um, and I really like them. And I, I think over the next couple of years we have a chance to be a special team. Uh, hopefully it'll happen at some point this year. Uh, may not happen the first week. We start out with, um, we go to NC State on the way back, we hit Virginia and then travel up to Providence. So that may be a little tough, but um, I really like our group. I think we have some talented young kids. We have seven kids from New York City. Uh, one of them is here today, Eunice Hopkinson, uh, my senior point guard. Uh, and I want to speak a little bit about him. Uh, in today's society, a lot of kids want instant gratification. And uh, Eunice is, is a senior now. His first two years with us, he didn't play very much. And to be honest with you, we were questioning how good he was. We thought he had some talent, but we didn't know if we could put it all together. Um, last year, about five games into the season, our point guard, who's a terrific player, Glenn Sanabria, uh, from St. Peter's on Staten Island, gets hurt. And I'm walking around the locker room telling my assistants, you know, we may not win another game, etc. And uh, Eunice gets his chance and steps up and goes on to have a, a tremendous season, averages 14 points a game in the league. Um, and winds up being a third-team all-conference player. And, and the reason I think that's so special is you, you hear so much about kids transferring these days, and transfer list has 750 kids, and here's a guy who didn't play much his first two years, stuck it out, and uh, when he got his opportunity, he made the most of it. He's a terrific kid, he's gonna be a great successful uh, success in life, and uh, we're just very proud of him. Um, uh, like I said, we have seven New York City kids, and uh, I, I think we're going to be better later than early, and uh, I really look forward to coaching this team. And uh, I'd like to wish all the coaches the best of luck this year. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, the next coach has probably more in common with me than he does with the other coaches because uh, he had a tremendous playing career at Ohio University. Uh, a place I spent six years when Danny Nee brought me from Brooklyn out to uh, the middle of nowhere. Uh, Athens, Ohio is not the end of the world, but you could see it from there. And, um, and he, he went from Ohio University to a uh, very successful stint as an assistant coach at Ohio State under Thad Mata. They had uh, great success, including a Final Four run and Big Ten championships. And um, he's got an opportunity uh, to come east and take over a program that I think, as, uh, as many people know, has, uh, has had success in recent years under Steve Peichel. Uh, Jeff is the same kind of grinder that Steve was. Um, he's getting used to the LIE traffic, he told me, uh, but he will. Um, and his hours will be such that he won't be on the LIE during rush hour during basketball season. So he'll be able to navigate that pretty well. But uh, a Long Island welcome, I guess, uh, is in store for the new coach at Stony Brook, Jeff Bowles. Thanks, Coach. Uh, I want to reiterate and echo what the coach has said. Uh, awesome event here. Uh, thank you for, to Hofstra University for hosting this. Thanks for the media for partaking this day. And 
We have a special guest, Lucas Woodhouse, a Long Island uh, native here with us, senior for us, uh, who's going to have a great year. Uh, I had a uh, welcome to New York moment. I grew up in a small town, Magnolia, Ohio, which had a thousand people on a really good day. And as soon as uh, I got the job, uh, Sean Hilburn, our athletic director, hired me. I'm driving back to LaGuardia, and it's a Friday, and it hit the national uh, media scene, and cell phone starts blowing up. Well, my cell phone had the directions to LaGuardia, and it was coming up to, a, am I going right or am I going left? And my phone just keeps ringing and ringing and ringing. So I missed my turn, which put me a good half, uh, half an hour you know, outside of where I had to get back to and barely made my flight home. Uh, the second welcome to head coaching moment came, as, as Coach alluded to, you know, it's about the Jimmys and the Joes, not the X and the O's. When I got back to Columbus, you know, I slept like a baby that night. So I looked at the stat sheet and saw Jameel Warney was a senior, Carson Purifoy was a senior, and Ray McGrew was a senior. So I woke up every half hour crying. But uh, really excited about uh, who we have back. Uh, but the interesting thing is it, it's a lot of unknowns, a lot of question marks. And Coach Peichel did a great job. And he'll continue to do a great job at Rutgers. But uh, we, have, we have a lot of guys who uh, haven't played a whole lot. So this can be a great opportunity for most. And we've had eight practices uh, uh, so far, and the one thing that we brought every single day has been a great attitude and great effort, which is what you want as a coach. Uh, now, hopefully that doesn't uh, wane, but uh, really excited about uh, you know the season. And as most coaches said, I think our goal is to be better tomorrow than we were today and uh, build towards March 11th, the championship game in the America East Conference. And uh, you know, after. Uh, Watching our team defensively, though, our first game is against Coach Ingles. I think we're going to, you know, we're up to 10 backdoor layups uh, with the Princeton uh, cuts. So hopefully we get that down to, to four. But really excited to be in the metro New York area. Uh, love the area and uh, honored to be the coach of Stony Brook. Uh, one thing I didn't know when I took the job is how great the facilities were. You know, it's a brand new arena, brand new uh, weight room, uh, beautiful campus. Remind me of a Midwest campus. And uh, just, you know, humbled and honored to uh, be the coach there. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And for those of you in the media, um, you know, I'm sure you get around and see a lot of college basketball. But if you haven't been to some of these campuses and, and uh, places, um, you need to make sure you check everybody out. Uh, I was blown away by Stony Brook a few years ago when I went out and they were working on their New, new arena and, and it is fabulous but to see an LIU St. Francis game you know is every bit as exciting as a uh, you know Big East game or Big 12 game if you love college basketball to me that's the purity of the game these guys are busting their tail in, in sometimes in national obscurity when right here in your own backyard you have some tremendous players so final coach of the day you know four years ago he was the youngest coach in the country when he was hired 28 years old uh, four years later, with uh, some success, needless to say, in a 23-win team a year ago, he's still the youngest coach in the country, uh, I believe, at 32, from Wagner, uh, Coach Bashir Mason. Thanks, Coach. I'm uh, actually the second youngest now. So, uh, forget the guy's name, but I'm happy he's the youngest now. <laughs> um, Listen, I'm uh, being the head coach of Wagner. I'm used to speaking last at these media day deals. Uh, so I know guys get answers, so I want to keep you guys long. Um, this is a uh, great event. I'm really excited, happy to be a part of it. Uh, driving in here this morning, uh, I, I still have the cool factor with my players, so I got my game in here with me. And we're in the car, we're driving in. And I've been here before because I played in Drexel. So we're driving through campus, and we're driving, and we're kind of driving. He's looking around, and I'm Still driving, and uh, I finally say to Mike, you know, I've been here you know, several times, but I have no idea where I'm going right now. Uh, so this is actually my first time you know, coming to Hofstra and actually coming through the front, through the front doors, uh, being a former you know, CAA player. But uh, I think this is a great event. I'm really happy to be a part of it. Uh, like Coach Plu said, uh, this is college basketball season. Uh, the process of getting in the gym with your guys, working hard every day. Uh, trying to put that puzzle you know, together uh, to paint a great picture at the end of the year. So uh, I wish all the coaches luck. Uh, pray for me. We're going to need it. And um, again, I'm happy to be a part of this. Thank you, guys.
Thank you, Coach. Uh, I'm going to just say a couple of final words. I'll stick around. I'm going to be here for the rest of the day. I'm going to get a chance to watch Hops for practice if you need me uh, in terms of college back, general college basketball stuff, any comments on these guys, I'll stick around. But these guys are going to break out now, and you'll be able to get a chance to uh, be with them one-on-one -on -one and their players too. So I want to thank uh, everybody for coming today, this first annual New York City College Basketball Media Day. And, and again, I'll reiterate what I said before. Um, this is the city game, you know. Basketball is a great sport. College basketball, uh, although we're in the middle of the NFL right now, and college football, uh, uh, you know, it won't be long before the ball's thrown up. We'll have great games uh, in and around the New York area with all these eight teams. And uh, uh, come out, you know, write pieces on these young guys. There's some great stories on each and every team. Uh, terrific coaching. I expect all these teams uh, to have success this year. Um, and in some cases, they're going to be battling for conference uh, titles, uh, you know, on this front row. But uh, support these guys and, these, and, and tell the stories of these young student athletes who bust their tail just as hard as the guys at Kentucky and North Carolina. Thanks for letting me host this. We're going to bring uh, Jeff Hathaway back up here to close this out. Fran, on behalf of everybody, let me thank you for being here today. We, we know your travel schedule. We, we know where you were yesterday and what time you got in last night. And, uh, very, very kind of you to be with us today and back in your roots. Uh, pleased to have you here. This doesn't happen. This doesn't happen today without eight coaches who are up to their nose in work, worried about the first game, worried about who's hurt, who they're playing, whatever the case might be. It doesn't happen without eight guys who are willing to take time out of their day and be with us today. So to the coaches, I say thank you very much because whoever said it is right, this is the mecca of college basketball. We have a lot, a lot of great college basketball in this area, and so many of you are guardians of the game and in a, a key ingredient to the great aspect of New York basketball. If all the coaches and the players would go to your assigned tables, we would appreciate that. We have plenty of food for lunch. And again, to each and every one of you, thank you very much for being here. And we hope this will be an annual event, very successful because of everybody that came today. Thank you.